Well, coming up on today's podcast, Volkswagen open up their electric car platform for other people to make cars with. The Audi Q4 e-tron is unveiled and at the Geneva Motor Show, so many cars and we talk plug-ins particularly. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. Tuesday, 5th of March today, it's Martin Lee here. I've been through every EV story I can find and picked out the best ones to save you time, to save you going through all the news and holy moly is There are lots of news today. You know what? It's good to be back in the studio today after yesterday's travel. And thank you for putting up with the podcast being recorded in a in a hotel room last night. But back in familiar surroundings right now at the bottom of the garden, back in the little home studio and back to bring you all of the best EV news I can possibly find today. I hope you enjoy. It's a big packed show today. Uh, There's loads more. I tried to whittle it down because the podcast has been getting a little bit long for some people. So always let me know your feedback on, you know, whether you you could do more or less or maybe I could do bonus ones or something if you don't mind listening to a bit extra I try and make this pretty much perfect for everyone's 15 minute commute maybe well thank you as always to myev.com for helping make this show if you're in the USA count yourself bloomin' lucky that you get myev.com it's a short URL, just four simple letters to remember, M-Y-E-V, and it's your gateway to buying and selling and learning about EVs as well. A dead, a totally dedicated marketplace about EVs. Okay, let's kick off with some really big news then, and this is Volkswagen announcing they're going to open up their electric car platform to third parties for other people to make cars with. Ego, and I love the way that these kind of things are styled, it's E full stop. Geo in capitals. Ego is going to be the first partner for the e-mobility platform. If I haven't, if you haven't heard this podcast for a while, Volkswagen have got this platform. It's called the MEB platform, right? And so it's what everything is based on. It's the wheels and the battery and everything that's strapped to that. The bit of the car that's plonked on top. Sorry, VW engineers. I know that you don't plonk. You carefully craft with German precision. There's no plonking going on. The bit that goes on top can be different. Well, Volkswagen Group is opening up its MEB platform, which actually in German... It isn't really MEB, it's Modular Electric Toolkit. Uh, Developed in recent years, it's going to open it up to other manufacturers. The purpose is to achieve a big reduction in the cost of what they call e-mobility, what you and I would call electric cars. The widest possible deployment of the platform is the the name of the game, really, because you get economies of scale then. It enables broad access to individual mobility to continue in the future. Volkswagen Group is currently projecting a first wave of 15 million pure electric vehicles based on the MEB platform. Now, this company I mentioned, they're called Ego. They're based in Germany, and they're going to be the world's first external partner to use the electric platform to launch further EVs in addition to VW's own range. Is that embarrassing for VW, especially if a different company do get a car to market before the ID slash the Neo slash the One, if you rearrange the letters? I'm still convinced it, well, there's a possibility it could be the, the VW ID One. I think Neo might be an internal code name, or maybe that's completely wrong. Either way... It's the car that's not a golf. Just don't call it a golf. VW get very upset if you do that. I mean, it's look, it's the same size as a golf. It's the same shape as a golf. It's the same width, really, length. It's not a golf. Whatever you do, don't call it, call it a golf. Uh, so, if that's going to be the first car out then on the platform, if somebody else does it, that would be embarrassing, or maybe not. Maybe VW don't care. A dedicated vehicle project is already being planned, and VW is highlighting the MEB's variability, even for small series. I mentioned it yesterday on the podcast. I teased it, the ID buggy. On show at the Geneva International Motor Show, and wowzers, there is so much going on at the motor show. And this, I just could bring you a ton of news. This really is actually if we were saying that previous motor shows have been the electric version of the motor show because everyone was obsessed with evs that's true of geneva this year and also supercars slash hypercars and of course many of those don't have electric motors in many of them do so i won't really go into them on this podcast but there's a fair bit of horsepower being unveiled at the geneva motor show Quick recap, Volkswagen investing 44 billion euros in their electrification strategy, but under that, that does include digitalization, mobility services, and autonomous driving, and many of those things could soak up a few euros, I'm sure. So, congratulations to VW for opening that up. We know that Ford, there's a strategic alliance with Ford, and 
They're a little bit behind at the moment. Ford haven't exactly got an electric platform of their own, so they'll be using VWs as well. I think that was pretty much all but confirmed. They confirmed the alliance that they're joining up and that they're going to obviously stay very independent. But I can't think whether that was just a very strong rumour slash was confirmed that Ford are using also VW's platform. Let's talk about another car built on it. It's a very versatile platform, this is. This is the Audi, the Audi Q4 to give it its full name, the Audi Q4 e-tron. And this is a concept that's going to form the basis of the fifth fully electric car to come from Audi. It's a compact four-door SUV. The SUV style is very popular, the look, but it's a smaller car than something like the Model X, for instance. Two electric motors are going to be involved on this one. So 225 kilowatts of power in the Q4 e-tron concept. And yes, it is a concept car at this stage. And the driving power of the concept vehicle brought to the road with quattro all-wheel drive, so a motor on each axle. You've got all of that fantastic power to put down on the road as quick as electric motors possibly can, way quicker than a fossil car. Not to 60, they're saying. And remember, with concept cars, you don't have to be necessarily bang on the money you can you know embellish a little bit if i'm being kind not to 62 not 100 k's 6.3 seconds which i think is slow i i would have thought they would have, have gone faster and then set a, a high goal considering all of the, the model threes will easily build, beat that even if you buy a, a thirty-five thousand dollar model three maybe you get your federal tax credit rebate whatever it's called uh then you know only just over thirty thousand dollars and you'll do not to 60 quicker than a very expensive audi but anyway that's neither here nor there top speed 111 miles an hour you know what so what if the top speed is 111 miles an hour there'll be some people in germany who like driving on the autobahn who don't like that there'll be 10 people who like to take their car to a track who don't like that why you and i 99.99 99.99 times out of out of 100. Why would you want a car to go faster than the legal speed limit? Uh, a little bit to get yourself out of situations, possibly. I don't know. I mean, never break the law, obviously. But 111 miles an hour is a fine top speed. The battery is key, though. And Audi have been pretty good from their concept can sort of talk through to production. They're, they've been pretty consistent. The battery they want to put in this is 82 kilowatt hours. That's the entire underbody space between the axles. That's going to give it a range of 279 miles. Let's call it 280. We're all friends here, right? 280 miles, WLTP standard that's measured on. Now, the technology of the Q4 e-tron concept controls the MEB platform. So another car built on it. This is going to be a very, very interesting time for vw they've built this platform and obviously they're like right we've spent the money on it (laughs) let's make as many cars as we can that's the name of the game right that's that 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 economies of scale that they have to do so when are we going to get it when are we going to get the fifth all-electric audi they say production will start at the end of 2020 well let's call that the beginning of 2021 should we sales of the audi e-tron ah here we go here's the key phrase in the press release that we'll be interested in and it's not about the q4 that i'm talking about at the moment sales of the new audi e-tron have already started we knew that sales of the audi e-tron have already started the first vehicles will be delivered to customers before the end of march right You've got 26 days. Chop, chop, Audi. We know that they've been delayed. We know that those uh, new Audi e-trons are later to the market than Audi would have possibly wanted. We know, we're know. we pretty sure that the delay was down to software refinement that they needed to do just to make sure the car is, is not being beta tested on the road by those early customers. The worst thing would be to do a suboptimal performance and then you know, it's Audi's first EV and full EV under the e-tron name and if it didn't go well. So... That's why the customers haven't had them. We've talked before about registrations being done. I had a couple of emails over the last couple of weeks. Someone saw one in the UK. So I, I, They didn't catch. She didn't catch the number plate because I, I was asking, oh, was it on German registered n- number plates? And she didn't catch it, but there was one in the UK. Left-hand drive, not right-hand drive. And I got another email from a listener. Oh, I should have looked this up. Oh, goodness. I hate not giving credit where it's due from someone that saw one in, I want to say, Austria. But anyway, I should have asked what number plate it was on. Was it a German registered? Because hundreds have been registered. But no, as far as I know, no customers have the new Audi e-tron yet. If you know differently, you can email me. My email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. 
Hey, let's talk about a couple of plug-in hybrids. We don't talk about them too much on this podcast because there's not too much to talk about, in fairness. But when we get new announcements, I always want to cover it. The Jeep. Uh, the Jeep Renegade and the Jeep Compass have had plug-in hybrids revealed. Adrian Padno, writing for InsideEVs.com, says that it's going to have the Renegade and the Compass are going to have a hybrid powertrain. It's going to have a 1.3-litre gas engine and an electric motor as well. The front wheels, gas engine. Rear wheels, electric, ergo four-wheel drive good for jeep do not to 62 that's not to 100 in about seven seconds and about 240 brake horsepower combined maximum output how far will they go on ev power alone 31 miles that's 50 kilometers before you run out of juice top speed ev power alone will do these jeeps on a top speed of 81 but if you're driving an EV at 81, the battery is certainly not going to last as long as it would do otherwise. And the other plug-in that Adrian's writing about today for Inside EVs is a new Alfa Romeo. And it's spelt T-O-N-A-L-E. If I was being less Italian, I would say Tonal. And if I was being Italian, I would say Tonale. So it's one of the two, right? So the Alfa Romeo Tonale uh, plug-in hybrid, because it just sounds cool. Uh, plug-in hybrid has been announced at the Geneva Motor Show. It's a concept for the time being, but they are signalling Alfa Romeo's intention for their electrification strategy. It's uh, a CUV, a crossover utility vehicle. Not quite as tall as a an SUV, but a bit taller and more practical than a sedan slash saloon. And so it looks, I mean, look, it's a beautiful, beautiful looking alpha it's got a really thin set of led headlights almost like the car has closed its eyelids you know like sometimes cats can close their eyes and just look out of the slits at them i mean the cats look down on you anyway but they look particularly condescending then that's how this alfa romeo looks tiny tiny little little row of headlights like they've been squished down but it looks gorgeous Oh, it's painfully beautiful. And so we don't know yet on the technical specs of the powertrain, but the Alfa Romeo Tonale is going to be plug-in, and there's going to be six plug-ins by the end of 2022 for the Alfa Romeo brand. And it's interesting that if you, like me, follow Formula One, I'm a huge Formula One fan. Yes, I know, they're not all electric, but hey, we can burn fuel sometimes, eh? especially if it's for a good bit of motorsport. And, uh, you know, I drive my electric car on the road for, for getting around, so I'm allowed to watch a bit of... Uh, petrol being burnt for motorsport but Alfa Romeo as a brand have replaced Sauber as a name it's the same team same car really but Alfa Romeo will be in Formula 1 this year for those 21 races and that's a signal of an intention that Alfa are upping their game with their brand name right so then the Sauber name is gone and there's now the Alfa Romeo team by the way if you're looking for a podcast recommendation at any time if ever this is almost too short for you this podcast you have a longer commute uh, then I highly recommend the Autosport Podcast. If you search your podcast apps or iTunes or Google Podcasts for the Autosport Podcast, you'll find it. They're just on their season preview, if you like, looking back at the two weeks of testing. And um, we look forward to Australia next weekend for the start of the Formula One season. Talking Tesla next, and the Supercharger V3 update is coming tomorrow. But what's it going to be? We're going to turn to Reddit for this. Now, Reddit, okay, take it with a pinch of salt. But this red like, it could be plausible. So let's take this with a very, very big pinch of salt. Maybe I should say very small pinch of salt. Which way would it be? Maybe it's the small one. I, this could be true. Redditor Net Brown claimed that they had a source and that they'd seen something from within Tesla that claimed the new superchargers, V3 superchargers, have a built-in coolant system. That's going to be at the base of the unit, and it pumps fluid through a thinner charging cable. The chargers will go up to 250 kilowatts. Zoinks! Holy moly! That's fast. To begin with, they'll be limited to 200 kilowatts. Model 3 vehicles, of course, the Model 3 has that new type of battery cell inside it. Again, if you're not familiar, if you're new to the podcast, let me take a, a step back. The original cells, they're all cylindrical, like basically like big batteries that you'd put at home in something. 18650s were what were used in and are used in the Model S and the Model X. It means 18 millimeters by 65 millimeters. If you're wondering why I'm calling them 18650s, it's the that's the dimensions. They're the bigger ones they use in the Model 3. They're called 2170s. They're not 
21 700 anyway that's aside so that they are more energy dense they pack more power they're more efficient and they are capable of taking a high charge rate so the model 3 could charge faster than the s and the x that's a bit of an issue what do you think for the tesla brand because well the s and the x are meant to be the halo cars the model 3 is the cheaper one anyway this rumor looks like it could well be true we haven't got to wait until we find out chances are you're listening to the podcast it all could be revealed already this is interesting about the highest speed being 250 kilowatts though so two things the Model 3 has been plugged in in Europe to 175 kilowatt chargers, and it didn't go up to 175 kilowatt. Whereas people are saying that when they plug into a Tesla charger, supercharger, that it will. That could be software slowed down, for instance. So it's peaking, peaking at about 130 at the minute here in Europe, plugged into very fast uh, CCS combo plugs. And the thing that makes me... So that makes me think maybe that rumour isn't true. The thing that maybe I think it is true, maybe this time last year, either on, a, on an investor call or somewhere, Elon Musk and JB. Now, JB Straubel, he is the chief technology officer and has been Elon's right-hand man with technology for all of time. And so they both said when they were talking about potential fast charging and they were asked you're you going to be left behind by the 350 kilowatt chargers in europe and the ccs 2.0 standard can do 350 and elon said look 350 it's a big number but it's not optimal actually if you go slightly slower charge speeds then there's a whole bunch of reasons for that that we're just super nerdy but but he mentioned 250 being where they would max out when he mentioned that a year ago and so that makes me think well maybe it could be true so that's just a rumor Staying with Tesla, by the way, Elon Musk's Tesla pickup truck will be unveiled later this year. User on Twitter, Kekin, said the Model Y is a truck, and Elon Musk replied, no, the truck unveil later this year. And we can't wait for that. It's a huge year of Tesla news. Look, I don't... This is not a financial podcast, but I sort of look at the Tesla stock price out of fun more than anything. I'm not invested, by the way, in... uh, Unless my pension, which I don't do, unless one of the funds invests in in Tesla. I'm not an active investor and I don't know anything about it. The share price, the stock price is really down since they announced the Model 3 being $35,000, which confuses me. Surely that's good news and the market drives the price down. Holy moly. I don't understand it. Right. Final story. Uh, Should we do? Let's try. How how long have we been going for? Let me flick to a different screen. Okay. uh, Maybe I've been going long enough. Let me talk about... uh, an all-electric Fiat, and I'll save the next two stories, the BMW X3 plug-in, and Mercedes are going to do a full-electric van, people carry I'll save that for tomorrow. Final story today, the 2019 Geneva Motor Show sees the debut of the Fiat Concept 120. See, I'm, I'm good with my Italian stories today. Uh, 120, it's the 120... Oh, no. 120 years. Yeah, I was about 121. But uh, it is. Centoventi would be 120 years, I guess. They're marking something. 120 years of, of history at Fiat. 120. The Fiat concept Centoventi is the brand's idea of a mass market small electric car. And, no offence, Fiat, you've seen the new Honda, haven't you? You've seen the new Honda Urban EV, or as it's called now, the e-prototype, and thought... That looks nice. Let's make our own. Look, if you're going to make a small car that is of those dimensions, then there's only so much you can kind of do with it. But it's not a million miles away, if I'm honest with you. Look, at the moment, it's a concept, but I just want to report the news because it's interesting that Fiat, with this concept car, are saying, here is our blank canvas. This is where our vision for electric cars of the future. And it's a guidance of where they're going to be going. And again, nothing like specs or anything like that that they're going with at the moment it's more about their design and the ideas of what it'll do and some autonomous driving and how big cars should be what the inside should be like and all those kind of things well look it's good to be back in the studio today and thank you for bearing with yesterday on the podcast as i was doing a bit more travel hopefully will uh, the podcast will sound normal for a little little uh, a while now for a good few days thank you very much as always to myev.com for setting our question of the week this week it's a great question as well how do you feel about tesla's recent announcement that they will only sell cars online do you want to test drive a car first cars aren't mobile phones i mean look mobile phones a thousand pounds thousand dollars now 
you can still send those back. What about if you arrange finance or a loan or organize the lease? Tesla are saying do a thousand miles before you decide and hand it back. But who's going to do all the paperwork or the credit checks and then hand the car back? Tesla seem confident you won't want to hand it back. How do you feel about buying a car online only? That's Tesla's future. Let me know your thoughts. My email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment on YouTube or Facebook or myev.com itself. There are 197 patrons of the podcast who keep this show going. Thank you very much to each and every one of you. Phil Roberts from Electric Future, uh, well worth following, by the way. EF.energy is his website, and on Twitter, well worth following, because he's often tweeting about electric cars as well. I may have... um had a couple of stories from him recently, claimed them as my own. Hello to Paul Hussey. Now, Paul and his business, electricmotoring.net in the Chicago area for your Tesla rental. And Brad Crosby as well. Thank you, Brad, so much for your continued support as a premium partner on the podcast and everybody else on Patreon. It means a huge amount. Thank you very, very much for your commitment. I never take it for granted. I leave 405 previous shows online in the archive for free. If you want to download any of them, you can do. But look, if you look forward to the future podcasts, hit that subscribe button and you can get the first one, the all the new ones, first and free and automatically as well. Take a couple of minutes to review the show if you want. If not, no worries. But uh, the kind of algorithms that rely on positive reviews do so much to help spread the word. Recommendations, it puts me further up the rankings and stuff. So yeah, that's why I'm... <laughs> If you're wondering, that's why I ask you to leave a review if you haven't yet. Say hi on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter by searching EV News Daily. Do have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. Remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.